Welcome back guys. In this video, we have to match each of these three exponential functions to these graphs. So we have to figure out which one is which. So when I get a question like this, there's a couple of things I like to do. The first thing I like to do is I like to check what the horizontal asymptotes are of the functions. And unfortunately, all of the horizontal asymptotes are four. Right? Notice the C value is 4 for all of these. So there's no way to tell which one of these can be these because they all have the same horizontal asymptote. Right? So y equals 4, y equals 4, y equals 4. Now let's say that one of these functions had a C value of negative 1 and then the horizontal asymptote, one of the graphs had a horizontal asymptote of negative 1. Then you know right away that that would match that one as long as there is no other horizontal asymptote of negative one. But unfortunately in this case, all of them have a horizontal asymptote of four. So there's no way to tell with uh, using that criteria. Another thing I like to do is I like to look for the y-intercepts. So these points here. So the way you find the y-intercept is you just plug in zero for x. So if I plug in zero for x here, this would be 1 over 3 to the power of 0, which is 1, times negative 2, which is negative 2, plus 4. The y-intercept here is 0 and positive 2. Here, we plug in 0 for x, times, uh, that would be 1, times negative 3 plus 4, that would give us 1. So the y-intercept is 0 and 1 in this case. Then here, 1 over 3 to the power of 0 is 1, times 5 is 5, plus 4 gives us 9, so this is 0 and 9. So, out of all of these, which one of these y-intercepts can we match to the graph? Well, the 0 and 9, that is the only one that's above that horizontal asymptote of y equals 4. Notice that both of these y-intercepts are below the horizontal asymptote, which would be one of these. So we can't tell with these two graphs, but we could definitely tell that number 3, function number 3, matches to graph A because that y-intercept is above the horizontal asymptote and that's the only function out of all of three uh, out of all three of these that has a y-intercept above the horizontal asymptote. So we're done there. It's just now we have to try to match one of these functions to one of these graphs. Unfortunately we can't use the y-intercept because with these graphs the y-intercept of 2 and 1 so close together it's kind of tough to tell right, with these graphs, what, um, which one has a y-intercept of 2, which one has of 1. These are not as uh, to scale of graphs, so we're going to have to use a different method. So the other method that you could use is you can actually take the parent functions of each and then put them through the transformations. So Let's uh, notice that both of these have a base function of 1 over 3 to the power of x. So we got 1 over 3 to the power of x. And then if you were to take this parent function and plot it, it would look something like this. Right? When you have a fraction between 0 and 1 to the power of x, it's always going to take this shape. If you have a number above 1 to the power of x, it's always going to look, it's going to be increasing. Right, this function is decreasing. So let's take number two. How are we taking this parent function and transforming it? Well, the a value is negative three, which means it gets stretched by a factor of three. But because the a value is negative, if you remember, that's also a reflection in the x-axis. Taking this, reflecting it in the x-axis. Then the c value of four means we take this and we shift it up by four. So out of both of these graphs, which one has this sort of shape? Well, this one does, right? Notice it's like this. So we took that 1 over 3 and then reflected it in the x-axis, then shifted it up by 4. So we know that function 2 matches graph B. Now what if we were to take 1 over 3 to the power of x, and put it through these transformations. So let's uh, draw 1 over 3 to the power of x again. That's the parent function. 
Okay, a value is negative 2, and it's negative. So it gets reflected in the x-axis like we did before. So it's going to look like this. But now notice that that k value is negative 1. And when you have a k value that's negative, you reflect it in the y-axis. So we're going to take either this function or this function, and we're going to reflect it in the y-axis. We already reflected this one in the x-axis, so let's reflect this one in the y-axis. How's that going to look? It's going to look something like that. Right? When we take this and we flip it over. And then that c value of 4, we take that and we shift it up. So that is the shape that we are looking for. And out of all of the graphs, that's graph C. So we know function 1 is going to match to graph C. Right? So that's how I do these questions. I first look at the horizontal asymptotes, see if uh, there's a unique horizontal asymptote, try to match it with the graphs. Unfortunately, in this case, all of them had a horizontal asymptote of 4. So that didn't work out. Then I like to get the y-intercepts, see if any y-intercepts match, right, relative to the horizontal asymptote. And this one matched that because this was the only y-intercept that was above that horizontal asymptote of 4, and that was the only graph that had that. So we know that function 3 matched with graph A. And then for functions 1 and 2, I took that base of 1 over 3 to the power x, that parent function, and then I put it through one of the transformations to see which shape we would get, right? And function 2 matched to graph B, function 1 matched to graph C.